Let my life be built on you. God. God? Develop me. Develop me. Good afternoon, church. Welcome to Connect this Father's Day. How is everyone? It's good to have you. I just want to say happy Father's Day to all of you fathers here. We want to celebrate you. It's easy to notice what you guys don't do right, what we don't do right. But today, we're going to celebrate fathers do to make their children's lives better. So let's just celebrate all of our fathers one more time. Yes. Thank you, fathers. We appreciate you. We honor you. We want you to know that we love you. And today, take a time, uh, make an effort to reach out to your dad, to your father, if he does not live here, if you don't see him often. You know, in this time when it's easier than ever to connect, don't be disconnected. Dial him up, FaceTime, reach out. It would be definitely meaningful to him, and it will bless you and will bless him. As we still continue this Develop Me series, I want to talk about Father's kindness today. A little harder. Uh, Father's kindness, because fathers may be tough, maybe they're, they're strong, maybe they portray uh, masculinity and all that. But kindness of a father cannot be replaced by anything. When strength comes with kindness... When strength comes with love and care, that's a great combination when they come together. So today we will talk about that. And also I want to just reflect quickly on dudes, yesterday's event, first event. It was a great moment. And just to see all the men really reaching out to God, saying, God, we need you. Lord, we have an impossible task in front of us, but this mission is possible because of you. So today as we celebrate Father's Day, let's celebrate our Father God, who is just above us all. He's looking out for us. So let's trust Him with everything we have and really rely on Him. But before I go into my message, I have a couple of jokes for you. Is that okay with you guys? I said that this is Father's Day jokes. So that means all you have to do is just say, even if they're not funny, say, we love you, we, we, we care for you, so we're going to laugh. Okay? Agree with that? Okay. That's what Father's Day jokes are. So... Um, Who was the most uh, business savvy woman in the Bible? Anybody? It was Pharaoh's daughter because she went to the bank of Nile and she pulled out a little profit. (laughs) There was a guy. He was turning 16. So he comes to his dad and he says, hey, dad, I want to start driving. And who doesn't want his son to start driving? I want my son to start driving. So he can get places on his own and give rights to his siblings. And so dad has, okay, yeah, that's good. We'll work towards that. And he says, but, uh, you know, he was using that leverage, that moment to to straighten them, seeing things up. He said, you got to really pay attention to your grades. And also you got to be nice to your siblings and to your mom, super nice. And you got to cut your long hair. The guy had super long hair. So they agreed on it. And then two months later, maybe, so son shows up. He says, Dad, I've been trying hard. I've been, I've been nice. I've been kind, respectful. And I got, I got my grades improved. So dad says, okay, that's good. But how about your hair? And the boy says, well, you know, when, the more I thought about this, here's what I think. Jesus had long hair. Disciples had long hair. Prophets had long hair. So I'm going to keep my hair. And dad says, well, that's, that's fair. That's fine. But all those people, they walked to wherever they needed to go. (laughs) This Father's Day. This Father's Day. Have you ever considered this Father's Day or any Father's Day saying Happy Father's Day to your Heavenly Father? As we talk about Father's kindness, we need to look up. We need to look up to our Heavenly Father and just to realize that blessings of fatherhood comes from Him first of all. If you had a great father, most likely he was committed to God person who knew his heavenly father and then reflected he resembled his heavenly father to you. Let's celebrate our heavenly father knowing that everything 
good and every good gift and perfect giving comes from our Heavenly Father. So as we go through this series, Develop Me, I don't want it to divert too far. I want it to develop fathers. I want to develop as a father. So never say in your life that, well, I'm, this is as good as it gets. I'm not going to be better, better than my dad. Or you would say, why should I be better than my dad when I wasn't treated this way? So I'm not going to treat my kids right. There is room to grow. There is room to develop. And we have to resemble our Heavenly Father to our own children. I remember my dad, and I'm going to call him later today because he's on the West Coast and it was way too early before services to call him. I remember um, that as long as I can remember, I only can count maybe a few times when he expressed his anger. He was... He was an individual and is an individual who knew how to control his temper, how to control and not give, uh, not allow others to see outbursts of anger, maybe frustration, even though I am certain that he had many of those instances where he wasn't happy with something. With eight children, you know, things could happen, but he was a wise person. And I'm thinking as we reflect our Heavenly Father to our kids, it requires working on our character. Working on our character, being wise, because nowadays what is, what is encouraged to just show your frustration, you know, let your feelings go. But actually, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the wise person, he controls his anger. He controls, he puts a lid on it because you say things, you do things that you will regret later. And here's what the Bible says about our Heavenly Father. How precious is your loving con- kindness, O God. God shows his love to us in loving kindness. I mean, he's tender. He's, he is cautious. He's careful so that the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. There is protection. There is protectiveness about our Heavenly Father. He wants us covered with His wings. He wants there to be shadow in your life. Protecting you from burning of the sun. From burning from all the things that can burn you. In God you can find refuge. You can find strength in Him. In the scriptures, God reveals Himself as a loving Father. As a loving father. The reason he reflects to us and shows himself as a loving father. So we're not afraid to approach him. God says, I love you. I know everything about you. But my first character, God is love. Come to him. And fathers, God trusts us to be what he is to us. To be that same thing to our children. To raise the next generation. To show them the love of God through our behavior, through our attitudes, our values. The way we live our lives at home. God wants us to show to our children. That's how much trust God has in us fathers. We have to learn from Him and live out that way with our children. Fatherhood was designed to encourage, to lift children up. To help them. That's why what enemies try and so aggressively. He's trying to destroy those relationships. Whatever God designed to bless us with. Enemies trying to destroy. He's trying to drive a wedge between generations. So the wisdom, knowledge, kindness will not be passed from one generation to another. He's trying to bring confusion And there is so much wisdom in fathers, but it's not being passed down because there is broken relationships. Did you know that in the Old Testament, very last book of the Old Testament, very last verse addresses father-children relationships. And if that's the setup for the New Testament, it means it's so important to God. Then he says, here is what the reason I am coming. Let's read this verse together. Here's what it says. In Malachi 4, 6, the last verse of the Old Testament, it says, He's preaching, meaning Jesus will come to preach this, will turn the hearts of fathers to their children. If your heart as a father is not turned towards your children, you're not being in the will of God. You're not being obedient to God. And the hearts of children to their parents, to their fathers, children... Those of you who are here, even as as grown-up children, 
we don't need to neglect our parents. Our hearts should be together because we're raising next generation, children, grandchildren. We need to be united in one, connected to God, united as one. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Now, this curse, it's not that God will bring the curse. It means if this doesn't happen, the current curse follows. When there is brokenness, when there is disunity, when there is no connection between generations, nothing good comes out of it. And we, wit we are witnessing that today. The older people are being disrespected. It's actually difficult for an older person to get a job. Youth is being preferred. Advice is being looked down up and upon because young people know everything. So we see some results of that. That's being not working in our, in our benefit. And those of you right now in this room who are going through relational struggle. Maybe you have problem in your marriage. Maybe there is parent-children relationship problems. Let me tell you something. Oftentimes, whatever you're fighting about is not even a big issue. It's not a big issue. That's why when I talk to people and they're fighting about something, I'm like, really? So but tell me the real issue. Well, that's it. They're like, really? That's what you're fighting about? You know why it's so important? Because enemies, he knows, he cannot deny you blessing God promised you as his child. But you know what he does? He destroys the process by which you can receive the blessing. And it's learning the wisdom. Learning to know how to follow God and receiving blessing from God. So what enemy does? He destroys the relationship in your marriage. Your children are not blessed if you fight in as a husband and wife. Then he breaks relationship between parents and children. There is no harmony. There is no blessing when there is disunity. Nothing good comes out of it. So he's, he's really trying to destroy relationships. And I want to tell you, as a father, as a pastor, I want to be vigilant. I want to pay attention to my own heart. Hey, is this worth fighting about? Am I being selfish? Because while I'm being selfish and trying to prove that I'm right, my children are denied security and comfort. They need to grow and mature in a safe place. It's my responsibility to be the father to my children. My God is to me. To show them the love and compassion, forgiveness. Not being overly strict, being Discipline, discipline, disciplining them with love and kindness. I grew up um, in a church where um, there was big emphasis on closeness in families and, and just commitment to one another. But one of the people that I knew from, from the time I was growing up, he, he had several children. I don't know how many children they had. And then all of a sudden this father decides that, well, I just had enough with this family. I want to find me some hobbies. So he's, he really loved outdoors, so he starts to go fishing all the time. He would go days for days fishing and live in the woods and just enjoying himself. And then just that neglect of his family led him to leaving his family. He left his family. He left the country. He, he went somewhere else to pursue happiness, to pursue other women. And you know what happened to his children? His children are scattered. Their lives are broken they're in drugs. They're doing all kinds of stuff because father left his post. Let me tell you, fathers, we have a job to do. We are guarding our homes. Let's not allow anything to enter our homes that wasn't supposed to be there. We are there to protect them spiritually, emotionally, physically. We are there to stand our guard whether we feel like it or not. Because God is on our side. He will help us. Never look at this situation and give up. Say, God, this looks too bad. Look, I want to trust you. I want to look up to you. And your heavenly Father will help you. Just this past Wednesday, as Tim was sharing his story about his father being always absent. Not being there to provide. Not being there to care. Not being anywhere. I heard this young lady behind me. She said, I know how that feels. That was my household. Same as, same exactly. My father was never there. He never provided. And it, was, it just hurts to hear that from a young person 
who's just studying life and she knows her father did not care. Fathers, if our children were to write a, a biography about us, what would they write? We don't need to be supermen. We just need to be present. We don't need to know everything. We just have to be honest and available and speak life into our kids. Because if they don't receive it from us, they will look somewhere else. There is no need to convince you that. There are devastating consequences when father isn't present. And you know where it starts? It starts with low self-esteem. You see kids who are not very social. They're shy, excessively shy. They don't know how to approach people. It most likely, they did not receive the word of affirmation from their parents. It starts with self-esteem. Then it goes to substance abuse. They're trying, kids are trying to find some satisfaction in life. Crime, juvenile de delinquency, teen pregnancy, running away from home, homelessness, sexual abuse, all kinds of abuse. When father is not present, anybody can come in and hurt the children. Kids are hungry for the words of affirmation and praise. If you haven't received that from your dad, from your father, I just want to tell you today that one thing is to, to acknowledge that, but another thing is to live endlessly with regrets. You cannot live rest of your life with regrets. You know why? Because you can never move on. So here is the thing. That is absolutely true. You cannot undo what was done to you. As much as, as it hurts, you have to realize you cannot go back and undo. Maybe you say, but what if? What if? The pain you went through could have been prevented. And maybe it's true, but you cannot undo what was done to you. Maybe you wouldn't be working three jobs today, even as, as a growing individual, to impress your father who never approved of you. Because you're trying so hard to impress him. You just need to give that up. You just need to give that up. You cannot undo what was done to you. There is another part to the story. And let me tell you what it is. Most fathers don't set out to mess up their children. As much as you despise your father. He did not start his life thinking he wants to mess up your life. When fathers have their children, they want to do what's best. But as we say to young couples who are getting into marriage, who are, who are about to marry each other, they're so excited. And we ask them questions such as, what was it about your parents' marriage that you did not like? And they tell us this or that. Most of them very, very discreet. They don't want to talk negatively about their parents and that's good. But we tell them, remember what you said and remember this. You're going to do exactly the same thing in your own marriage. And they look at us like, what are you talking about? We said, unless you will be proactive in learning how to do marriage right. Because if you don't, you're going to repeat the same mistakes because this is what you know how. If you know how to cook something, right, it just comes naturally. You get up in the morning, you know how to make your eggs. But try to make a souffle or something more complicated. You need to learn. You need to give it a few tries. You need to train. Read the recipe. If you don't know any better recipe how to treat your children, you're going to do exactly the same thing you learned from your father who mistreated you. Be proactive and learn from your heavenly father who is the best father you can ever have. Even if you had the kindest and most loving father, learn from your heavenly father. Learn from your good father, earthly father. Because here's the thing. You cannot give away what you don't have as much as you wish for it. I wish I could give you a million dollars, but I don't have it. You can wish for something. You can believe it's good. But if you are, don't have it inside of you, you can never offer that to others. So what's the good news? You would say, what's the good news? Well, before I go to good news, I'm going to tell you another joke to lighten up things a little bit. There was a guy in the hospital. So he's laying there and uh, he had both of his legs broken. So comes a nurse and she says, sir... I have good news and bad news for you. He says, give me bad news first. And he says, 
What is it? She says, well, it looks real bad. We have to amputate both of your legs. Both of your legs. It looks bad. He thinks, what, it, what is the good news? And she says, well, the guy next to you, he wants to buy your sneakers. <laughs> I tell you, this father jokes there. <laughs> you just have to laugh and think about it or not think about it. So what is the good news? What is the good news? What's the real good news? It's not half good news. It's not somewhat good news. You know what the good news is for every one of you fathers, children? The good news is God has a solution for every problem in the world. If you think you had it bad. You think you don't know how to be a great father. God has a solution to every problem in the world. How good would it be instead of running away from God when we need something? When we're failing. When we're going to start towards God and say, God, I need your help. That's why God reveals himself as a loving father. He can care for you. He can provide for you. He can guide you. Run towards him. God has solution for every problem. Whether you've been hurt as a child, as an adult, I, I figured out there is no expiration on, on inner pain. When you talk to an adult and they carry something in south, inside, 90% certainty, every time it's true in my case, I start talking to them about their childhood. And usually it goes to childhood. Even if you are a father who hurt your own children, there is redemption for you. Don't become angry and bitter and resent yourself endlessly. Repent, receive forgiveness, be redeemed and start living out life like God wanted you to be. There is good news for everyone who chooses to trust in the Lord. There is good news. Choose to pursue God with everything. So here is the things I, I really desire for you. Allow God. To heal your father wound. Every one of you in here. Whether it comes from your father. Or any person in position of authority over you. They can hurt you more than anybody else. You know why? Because that's the principle of life. People you look up to. People you put as your role models. When they hurt you. It hurts the most. I had a great father. I have a great dad. And he never hurt us. Even if he punished us. We didn't like it, but we knew he was, he was just. We deserved it. But I, I was hurt by spiritual authority in my life. I remember being part of a one church and being a part of thriving youth group. And we had many ideas, many aspirations. You know, like young people, they, we don't, don't want to sit around. We want to change the world. So we get together with our youth leaders and we say, let's go talk to the lead pastor we want to talk to him about some ideas we have about what are we going to do next. So he sets the date and we come there and the whole Sanhedrin is there. They're all there just listening to what we have to say. And we present ideas. We're excited. We're just thinking this is when it's going to start happening. And then one pastor says, let me tell you a story. <clears throat> he says, when I was young, I used to work in such and such uh, factory and I, was, I had to walk to work, and there was a, a garbage pile there, that city garbage pile. It says there was a lot of ravens and a lot of crows, and they would just crow all day long loud. It says, you remind me of those crows. And, and we just sat there like, wow, let's pray. That's what they said, let's pray. So we prayed, of course, we went like leaving that meeting very heavy hearted. And there's no surprise we left that church in short time. Because we realized that people who are in spiritual authority over us, they don't see us like nothing. They don't think we have to offer. We're just like crows, that crow nonsense. If you've been hurt by spiritual authority, don't give up on church. Don't give up on serving. Because you need healing. Allow God to heal your wound, father wound, even if it's not from your father. Coach, teacher, boss at work, anybody in position of authority, when they hurt you, it hurts when they told you something. Maybe expose some of your weak areas. Instead of training and raising you, they put you down. Allow God to heal your father wound. Everything kids were supposed to receive from from, from parents, when they don't, they're going to look in other places. 
What happens to young men, to boys, when they don't receive words and affirmation, when they don't feel secure behind their fathers, when fathers don't push them, don't trade them well? You know what happens? On one side, boys become very aggressive. Men become very aggressive. Have you ever met some guys who are very tense all the time? Nobody's even doing anything, but they're very tense. They're like, don't touch me. I'm going to cut you. Don't, don't cross my way. And they're always super tense. You know why? Because they're insecure. Because their father was never there to tell them they're valuable. They're secure. They need to pursue their dreams. I'll back you up. Or other side of the spectrum, they're very passive. Their father told them, oh, don't worry. Nothing's going to come out of you. So they're passive. They're just, I don't care. I don't care. There's no aspiration. There is no, no, nothing in life. No goals. They're not pursuing anything. You look back to what happened to them in childhood and you can trace it back. They don't believe in themselves because no one told them they worth anything. What happens to girls? If you don't affirm that, if you don't tell them they're beautiful, they're worth it, they're going to start looking effect for affection and affirmation in other sources only to be abused by men. Only to be abused by those who will take advantage of them because they're, they're yearning for, they're looking for affirmation. Fathers, don't allow your hurt to prevent you from giving love, from being kind and loving towards your, your children, to those who God put in front of you. Now, even if you have some wounds and you want them to be healed, here is the, 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 the truth remains true. That you cannot undo your past. You cannot change your father. The only person you can change is yourself. So what is the solution? I said God has solution for everything. After God heals your heart. After you identify the hurt. Find and surround yourself with people who would speak life into you. Find and surround yourself with new people who would be godly, who would be like, like healing to your soul. Here is what James says about that. He says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now, does it say about God? Does it say about coming to God? Of course we're coming to God. But it says, confess, talk to someone else about what hurts. Talk to someone else about your experience. You would be surprised how many other people went through the same thing you went through. That's why there are small groups, men's small groups, women's small groups, youth small groups, family small groups. So you can find people who are in the same boat as you. You can help one another. And here is the thing. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. When we talk about it, when we open up to God to heal us, when we speak life to one another, let's pray for one another. Let's say, God, we need you. It produces wonderful things when you allow that to happen. Simply, you need to join a small group. You need to find people who are in the same season of life, same situation, and do life together. No one meant to be alone. Find a father and be a father. <clears throat> You would say, well, I don't have any connection with my dad, with my father. He's not alive anymore or he's estranged. Find a father. That's why we're in church. That's why God created community of people. Anytime you go read the Bible, it's always about community. It's always about someone else in your life. It's older teaching younger, younger taking care of the kids. And together we grow. We help one another. We take care to provide food and shelter for our family, right? No one just sits around, there's no food, there's no shelter. We take care of it. Have you ever thought that having a spiritual father figure in your life is just as important as food for your, for your flesh, for your body? To have that for your spiritual health, to have a father in your life. To have someone guide you. To have someone help you in your choices. When you don't know what to do. Someone you can talk to. Find that person. Start serving on Connect Teams. We have many teams available to choose from. This is how you start doing ministry. How you start doing life. You find somebody who is committed. Who is present. Who always serves. And you can guarantee that that person is committed to God. They can be a father figure for you. You can learn from them. 
you can learn something from them. Because here's what the Bible says. Here is the picture of our Heavenly Father. He's a father to the fatherless. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. God is father to the fatherless. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, if we are here to represent God's spirit, God's image to this world, we would become fathers to those who are fatherless. They had no chance of having a good father. Let's become that person. And I'm so grateful for our kids' ministries. They're providing care, love, and support to the children in our care. Start serving somewhere. Be that person to someone. Be a father you wished for growing up to somebody. Be that father to someone who doesn't have one or could use one. There is a difference every one of us can make when we start noticing other people's needs. But it only happens after you allow God to heal your own heart. After you find a father and then you become a father. And lastly, relate to God as father. There is truth in this that cannot be overlooked. When Jesus prayed, when Jesus prayed, people were asking him, how do you pray? We see when Jesus prayed, he said, Father, thank you for answering my prayer. I knew you are going to answer my prayers. This week, I want you to think right now, back to your prayers this week. Anytime you come to God and you open up before Him, do you, do you treat that prayer just as prayer before mealtime, before bed? Or do you, do you really, every time you address God, you think, I'm talking to my Father. I'm talking to my Father. The secret to closeness with God is in relationship. It's not in steps. It's not in programs. It's in relationship. How do I treat my God, my Father. Our kids go to school. In Stratford School. We just like our schools. They're good. Teachers are good. The, uh, the school system is good. They love going to school. But I clearly understand. Teachers love my kids. They care for them. They teach them. But they're not their parents. I am their parent. They will never love my children like I love them. Right? Right? You can refer to God as giver, as provider, as many things. But once you start relating to God as my father, you understand it's totally different level of relationship. Anytime you ask him, God, my father, father, I need you. Father, I need this. Open up your needs. Here's what Jesus said about prayer. He said, this then is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, how be, how be your name. Jesus said, when you start praying, he said, don't pray like Pharisees, like religious people just giving dues in their prayer. Start with saying, our Father. Acknowledge him as your Father. And then talk to him, whatever bothers you. It changes the dynamics when you come to God and you pray to him like your Father. You know, when Jesus was here in this world, remember the instant when Jesus was baptized and here comes God the Father. And he says out loud so that everybody can hear. He, can, he says, this is my beloved son. And I am proud of him. You know, your kids, my kids, they need to hear those words from you and from me. This is my son. This is my daughter. And I'm proud of them. You know, when I, uh, before I married Nadia, we were dating. Of course, uh, I did the proper way. Um, I talked to her parents, uh, to Victor and Lucy, and they gave me the green light to date Nadia. And, of course, I knew she liked me. I asked her before, so I don't waste the effort. So uh, <laughs> I told you guys are all, like, purpose-driven. We, we task-oriented. So if there is an uh, effort, it needed to end somewhere. But what I realized quickly, that she wanted to, the date in her mind was, like, to be at home. I for me, it was kind of weird at first. Like, I wanted today to take her away and, and just go away, just be together, hang out somewhere. But in her mind, just to stay home for a date was just fine. You know why? Because she had close relationship with her dad, Victor. And she was comfortable 
sharing about anything, talking about anything. I was close with my parents, but first of all, I was a, a boy, and uh, there was different dynamic. But for a girl to be that close with her father, I think that's what made her so confident, so independent, and not yearning for approval from other people because she knew who she was because she was so close, close with her father. You know what happens when we are that close with our Heavenly Father? We don't live on approval of people. We don't yearn for others to tell us you're good, you're this, you're that. We appreciate what they say, but we look up for approval to a Heavenly Father. And he, if He gave me a mission, if He gave you a mission, this is what you're all about. You're focused on that mission. You accomplish that mission because you hear Him say, you are my son. You are my daughter. I love you. My stamp of approval, approval on you, on your life, on your ministry, on your family, on your marriage, on your finances. I want to see you thrive. Be consistent. Be committed to me. So as we, as we wrap up this, this service, the three things I want you to do. Allow God to heal your father wound. Whatever caused that wound whether it's your father, any position, people in a position of authority, whatever it is, allow God to heal it. God doesn't want you to carry that pain around for the rest of your life. God wants to heal that wound. Allow God to heal it. Join a small group. This is how healing process really goes faster if you allow other people into your life. When you start talking life and, and receiving life, make a decision to be a father and find a father. Find a father you can, you can imitate, you can look up to. And be a father to someone you never had. Be that father. And lastly, get closer to your heavenly father. Come home. You know why Jesus came? He came to reunite us with our heavenly father. He said, I came so you will know the father. His last prayer, he says, Father... Protect them. Keep them. It's all about Father. His last prayer, read it. John chapter 17. He says, Father. He says, Father, many, many times. He says, Father, I trust them into your hands. I want them to know you how I know you. That was his mission. If you are wandered, wandering away from God, if you are far away from God, get closer to God by calling him your Father. And it's available through asking forgiveness of your sins. Through making Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Claiming ownership of your rightful position in God's family. Because that's the reason Jesus came. To make you God's son and God's daughter. Don't let that opportunity pass you by. Especially these fathers. They reach out to God. Say, God, I want to be your child. I want to be in your family. I want to sit at the table and know that you care for me. That you will provide for me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this Father's Day, we just want to say thank you, Father, for loving us. For loving us unconditionally. For showing your love before we could ever be good. For, for reassuring us that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, I pray for every person in this room that their father wounds would be healed and restored. Whatever caused that pain, Lord, if they're carrying that pain for many years now, Lord, I pray that you will heal. You will touch and restore. You will make them whole again, Lord, so they can look up to you and believe that you are good, Father, even if earthly Father wasn't good. Father, I pray that you reveal yourself to them. Lord, I pray for, for people to find a father, to be proactive, knowing that this is so necessary, and to be a father to someone who needs them. Lord, I pray that as fathers, we will not abdicate our, our responsibilities, but we would step up to the plate and say, God, we're going to rely on you. We're going to find a father if I never had a good father, and be like you, be imitating you, Lord. And I pray that we will see someone in need will see not as fatherless and become fathers to them. Lord, and I prayed for those who are far away from you. Lord, I pray that they will wake up and say, I'm tired of being away from home. I want to belong to a family of God. I want to have protection over me, provision over me. And they will come home and say, God, I need you. If it's you that I'm talking to today, 
If you are far away from home, if you are not in the family of God, it's available to you just by asking God, forgive my sins. I want to be your child. Be my Lord and Savior. I want to follow you. I want to serve you with all of my life. Just pray that prayer now. Father, we pray to you with those who are asking your forgiveness and restoration right now, Lord. If someone wander off, Lord, I pray that you touch them, Lord. Touch their hearts. Heal their wounds. Show them your goodness and your grace. May they be restored and healed. Lord, and together as we celebrate Father's Day, Lord, I pray that we will never forget your kindness and love. We can run into your arms and know that we will be saved. Lord, may healing take place, Lord. But help us to grow into fathers you created us to be. Lord, help us to be fathers you desire us to be. Help us to reflect your goodness and love to our children so they too will grow up to be great fathers, great mothers to the next generation until you come back. Lord, we honor you. We honor you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.